Hello everyone, my name is Zach Peterson and welcome to another Flux tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about a very useful design reuse feature and that feature is the project templates feature in Flux. Now if you've looked around the dashboard or you've looked under the main menu inside uh, the PCB editor or the schematic editor, you may have noticed a templates feature. I'm going to show you how to access this feature, how it works, and some of the best practices that you should follow if you're going to create templates templates from some of your own projects. So make sure to open up Flux and follow along. So to get started, let's go ahead and get into my Flux profile. Now inside uh, my dashboard, I've got several projects here. And up here in the top right portion, uh, you can see here under the new project dropdown, I have the option to make a new project from a template. So whenever you have any templates associated with your profile and you wanna create a new project from them, those, will, uh, those available templates will appear here uh, in this part of the menu. On to the portion about creating templates. So how do you create templates and what types of templates can you create? Well, the reality is that any of these different types of projects that I have here, so the sub layout project, this part, this completed project, and then this simulation project, all of these could be turned into a template. So just as an example here, you see I've got this project here. This project has already been turned into a template. And um, if you go into the top menu, you can just see here under new project from template, you can see that the, uh, the link for this project that I already have open is already listed underneath uh, this, uh, this open uh, menu here. So of course I could click this and it's immediately going to create a new project from this template. Also inside uh, the main menu, you will see remove this project from templates. So since this project was already a template, I can of course remove it from my list of templates. Or if I opt to say, open up this sim model that I've used in a different video, I could actually take this and make this into a template. So here in the main menu, you see right here, I've got this option, make this project template, and so on and so forth for all of these other parts. So um, here for this part, here for this sub layout, and then I could even open up some of these examples and turn them into a template if I want to. So that's a really convenient way to very quickly create templates. So there's only one type of template. So what that means is, in order to keep track of all of your templates, it's important to name them appropriately. So with this particular op amp simulation, uh, this op amp simulation you'll see here has a bunch of code associated with it, and then it's just got the three terminals here. So this can be used in another project. But if I wanted to make a template out of this op amp, I can do that right here from this option. And I think it would be important to then rename this to have the word template in it so that it's very clear that this project is actually going to be used as a template. And then I could just click this, make this project a template, and then you see it's enabled here, or I can just remove this project from template. So just make sure to name your projects appropriately if you do plan to use them as templates. So now that I'm in a project, and let's just suppose I want to use this project as a template, what can I do with this project and what type of template can I create? Well, I could immediately make this into a simulation template. So I could basically take this, go over here to make this project a template, and I would have a universal op amp simulation template. And then I could just go through and modify all of this stuff. But let's actually do something a little more interesting and we'll make a PCB template. So this is going to be a small PCB that has a microcontroller in it and a, a pin header. So to get started, I'm gonna find an STM32 FO3 example. And this is a sub layout. And this sub layout looks just like this in the PCB. As soon as it loads, you'll be able to see it. So this is a common example that I like to use um, and it's located in the public library. All you have to do is just search for STM32 FO3. We're also gonna use a pin header, and I'm gonna go with a one by eight pin header. And 
Here we can just make a few connections just to illustrate what we need to do in the PCB layout in order to create a decent template. So after I wire up these connections, we can then transfer to the PCB. And now we can see everything in the PCB. So when you're making a PCB into a template, all of this stuff that you see on the screen is going to appear in a new project when you take your template and make a new project out of it. So here the first thing what we need to do is change the board size. Um, I'm going to change this to say 4 centimeters by 2.5 centimeters and that's just about big enough for our board and what we can then do is maybe move this uh, pin header up here along the edge and then this STM32 maybe we can rotate it to right so that everything lines up and of course then we could go through and complete the routing on this so that we uh, get all of these connections into these pins um, so this is basically a template. Um, once we finish routing this, um, we'll have something that we can use as a template to generate new projects. So this is a decent example of uh, something that can help you speed up your design time. Um, here we've got a sub layout that has everything you need uh, for the STM32. Um, you could actually go into this sub layout and fork it and then you could break out more terminals on it so you can make more connections in your template. Um, you could also add some other components onto this, uh, onto this PCB, so like a power regulator, um, maybe a power connector, something like this. Um, that's going to give you some more flexibility once you actually take this and put it into a new project. But once you have this uh, to the state that you like and you're satisfied with it, of course just go up here to the main menu, go down to make this project a template, and it will create a template out of your project. Um, before you do that, of course, make sure that you put a good description in here. So we're going to call this an STM32 MCU template. It's going to be our description. And here we'll just call it uh, STM32 FO3 uh, template project. So that's everything that we need to do. and. Um, we can now make a simple template out of this uh, just with this option from the main menu. Now because Flux is all about sharing and collaboration, I think it is of course worth asking what happens when a project is shared and added to your list of templates at the same time. So let's just take a look at this project. So this project is already added into my templates list in my main profile. But What I've also done is I've actually shared it with my secondary profile right here. So if I just copy the link, go over to this other window, I can actually open that project in my secondary profile. Now once this opens up, you'll actually see here that I don't have access to this as a template in my secondary profile. Now you can see here, I have the option to make this project a template. But you can also see here in this option right above this, I don't have any templates configured for this profile. So if I wanted to use this profile as a template in my secondary profile, I can do that. I just need to then click make project a template. And now in my secondary profile, I can take this and make this a new project based on this template. So once I create this new project, it's going to exist in my secondary profile only and then I can go through and modify it, do whatever I want to it. It now just exists inside of my secondary profile, as you can see right here in the upper left portion of the window. Now, what would happen if I say, go back to this uh, original project, which was used as a template in my primary profile, and let's say I change some of these parameters. So maybe I change this resistor to say 50 ohms instead of 500 ohms. And then um, I'm going to leave this one here. But essentially what this is doing is it's causing this uh, op amp to rail out. And you can see that right here in the, uh, the waveform readout. Um, you can see it's actually railing out here.
But um, let's say I go ahead and do this. Now, remember, this is shared with my secondary profile right here in this project. Now, let's just suppose I refresh this, and then I'm going to refresh the new project that I just created based on this template. Now, when this refreshes, you're going to see here that the changes have propagated into this shared project, and I can see those changes in my secondary profile. However, the changes that were made to the template did not propagate into my new project that I created based on the template. So that's really important because once you take a template and you make a new project of it, the changes in the original template will not propagate into the new project. So that's very important. And in fact, if I go here to the change history, you're not going to see anything. There, there's no version control associated with this. It still looks like a brand new project, even though the original template was changed, as we can see here. Now, if I were to say, you know, take this, click new project from template, and then create another new project, the brand new project that I create is going to have this 50 ohm resistor here and not the 500 ohm resistor. So the last thing that I think we need to address is what happens when you have a project that's created from a template and then one of the parts in that template receives an update. So let's take a look at what happens here. So this particular uh, project uh, has a component in it. It is this component. So I could actually make a modification to this component and then we can see how those parts changes propagate into any projects that are created from this uh, project template. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a new project from a template. Now once everything loads, of course I can uh, change the name here. I'm just going to change this to op amp sim test. And what we're going to do is we're going to modify one of these components in here and then we're going to see how those parts changes propagate. So here, I actually have access to this particular component in my library. Now, of course, I could go back to the library, open it here, or what I could do is, of course, like I just did, right-click on it and click Open. So you can see here, I have access to this, and what I could do is I could make a change to one of these pins, I could add or remove pins, or of course, I could go down here and change some of these values like minimum and maximum output. So just for fun, we're going to change this to, let's say, 12 volts, and then we're going to change the gain to 50K. So these are the changes that we just made. You can see here it's saving, and then we're going to publish these changes. And once we publish these changes, we'll then see how the parts, uh, how the changes propagate uh, into our project that we created from this template. So those changes have published successfully. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my simulation test project and you can see down here in the lower left corner immediately the updates available box comes up and this gives you the chance to review any of those changes coming into this project. So remember, even though you took this and created it from a template, the parts in this project are still linked to the original parts, as I've shown here. So any changes made to this original part will then appear here in this project that you created from this template. And then you can accept or ignore any of these changes in your new project. All right, everybody, thank you so much for following along with this tutorial. As you can see, the template system in Flux is a bit unique. Um, it has an interplay with version control and collaboration that is very important to keep in mind. So make sure that you understand how the collaboration and version control systems work in Flux when you are exploring the use of templates for reusing your old projects. Make sure to hit like and subscribe on this video and you'll be able to keep up with all of our tutorials and updates as they come out. Thanks again everybody and we'll see you next time.